Welcome back to Naval Action. I thought I'd start a little series that I've... My working title at the moment is Scuttlebutt. And it's just a bit of a where are we right now with the game? Um, what's good? What's bad? Uh, my opinion on perhaps some things that could help us a wee bit. Uh, what we're looking forward to in the game. Uh, yeah, so Scuttlebutt. Um, so, first of all, just a bit of an introduction. Uh, I played Sea Trials uh, almost from as soon as it was out, to be honest, and I made it all the way up to Victory, which is how I ended up getting into the early open world closed alpha. Um, at the time, I wasn't there was not, not enough there for me. The player base was tiny, it just wasn't doing it for me. Uh, I then left it for a couple of months, and then when she came on Steam with Open World, I pretty much picked it up from the get-go. Uh, I only play PvP. I have never been a PvE player in sort of any form of game I've played, be it you know Warcrafty type things, uh, through to other stuff. I do do a lot of PvE activities, however, so it's not that. Um, I only go around shooting things. I do do my trading and my crafting and all of that sort of stuff. But I enjoy the PvP element, and I'll come back to that a bit later. Um, so, although this review possibly misses a lot of pertinence for folks who are big PvE punters, uh, it's not my thing. So, uh, you'll have to cherry pick the bits that matter, or just ignore it. Don't do so. So, first of all, combat. Um, the combat is as good as it has been and better uh, since Sea Trials. It's the shining element of the game. They've made a few tweaks uh, in a couple of patches in the last few weeks where we've now got the ability to control our crew um, more finely. So we can uh, we can allocate crew only on a toggle at the moment. I'd like it to be on a slider, but you can turn sailing off, as it were, and the spares, the, the folks who are working on the sails, go and help out on gunnery or survival or boarding or repair. Um, and that has made a few things viable that never were. So at my level, which currently is master and commander, uh, under crewing really wasn't a good idea. Your reload time was too slow. Uh, whereas now I can. I get broadside with a ship, I can just sit there with my sailors very much dedicated to gunnery. My reload time is fast, and as long as I don't need to any, do any jiggling around, um, I can happily under crew. Now, the net effect of that is two things. Um, it means I can do my missions much more quickly, and probably with a little bit less risk, set it on fire. Yeah, look at that, that'll, that'll spark up a bit later. Um, so that's been a really good improvement. They've worked a lot on the turning of ships, so the square riggers, this is a square rigger. Oh, it's got square sails. They're a lot harder now turning into the into the wind. Um, you really do have to get your manual sailing skills up. Um, they've changed boarding a little bit, so you now have to have a minimum amount of crew and uh, you have to get your boarding preparation to 50% before it matters. Before you can engage boarding, I should say, not before it matters. Of course it matters. Um, so they've been really the the combat changes, tweaks. There's been a couple of new ships. Uh, the Niagara, which I've done a vid on, and the Essex, which I've yet to get my hands on. Uh, it'll be a while before I do, to be honest. We've got some things and stuff that I'll talk to in a moment. Um... However, the other changes in combat... Oh, they've changed it now, so you can't call for reinforcements. So it used to be that if you were within Kui of your nation's... Uh, your national ports, uh, there was a little bit of text that said reinforcements available. If you got jumped by a bunch of baddies, you could call for reinforcements, and basically it would bring in the same rating of ships. Not quite, but the calculation you'd use to determine a ship. It would bring in the same rating of ships as you have. Uh, and in turn, that would uh, balance the fight out. And it was actually a good way, if you were a bit of a lobby of, um, of farming experience, you'd get yourself attacked and call reinforcements, and then you could farm lots of experience. However, for PvP... 
Um, it's not quite working the way they want it to. I think a lot of folks can pull people, get pulled into battles, and then pull reinforcements, and blah, blah, blah. People can use it as a farming technique. So they're having a bit of a rethink. Um, and that's probably uh, the two biggest changes that they've done in recent times uh, in combat is our crew skills and dropping reinforcements for the time being. Um, trading, so there's been a few big changes in trading. Um, probably the biggest change, of course, is that you can now build, you can build uh, factories or farms or uh, mines, and you can do that for a number. Basically, whatever that port produces, you too can produce it. Um, you don't produce it for free, you still have to pay whatever the port price is for it. Um, so it's not like free resources, and they're expensive to build too. But what it does let you do is it lets you have guaranteed supply. So if you're a shipbuilder, uh, for example, you're going to use a lot of coal, you're going to use a lot of iron, uh, you're probably going to use potentially silver or gold, depending on your level. So what you might want to do is, is knock up a couple of these buildings. Um, it guarantees you supply. And with that supply, you can then either trade or use it to ensure you've got the necessary materials to do your, your building, uh, your ship building. Now the other thing they've done in the, in the sort of trading arena is they've lowered the amount of stuff that the AI produces. Now, this is a good idea in the long run because it makes trading more relevant, it makes crafting more relevant, uh, and it makes a player-driven economy more relevant. And uh, I think over the long haul, it's a great idea. Um, but with low server population, dropping the production from the AI um, really does make things a little bit harder for the traders, to be honest. In a, in, a, in a big world where you've got thousands of people online, I think it's a great idea. In a little world, not such a great idea. And the real difficulty with early access is the mechanics that you're testing, you're testing them with effectively uh, a much smaller player base than potentially you're aiming at. Uh, and so sometimes those mechanics, they, they perhaps don't match your expectations. So that's always a bit of a challenge. So that's what's been going on in trading. Uh, you can still make good money in trading, by the way. Um, it's pretty easy. Capture yourself a trader's snow, or build a trader's snow, or buy a trader's snow. Uh, they've got an enormous cargo capacity, 3,200 tons. Um, and if you can make even just 50 credits a ton, uh, with 3,200 tons, you know, you can make 100,000 easy. Uh, it might take you a couple of hours or an hour and a half, perhaps, to find the trade route that renders that return for you. But it's easy enough to make money uh, as a trader. The next um, thing, I guess, is, is sailing in the open world. So this is probably, for me, the hardest thing for them to get right. So. Right now, if you were to look at the external map of naval action, um, it's pretty much uh, all of Florida, all the way down to the sort of tip of Central America, Haiti, Cuba, Dominican Republic, so on and so forth, the Caribbean. Um, now, in game time, to travel from, let's say, the north boundary of the map to the south boundary of the map is probably about a five-hour hike. It's probably double that to go east to west. Um, and so, from a, you know, if you think about back in the days and things like World of Warcraft, to be honest, if you decided to run from one end of Azeroth to the other, it would take many, many hours. Um, but of course, you never had to do that because you had speed enhancers like mounts, and you also had uh, wivens and all sorts of thingos to fly you around. So you were never quite in the same situation as we are in naval action where quite often to do a mission it's a 20 minute sail you've got to spot a little white set of cutlasses on the horizon which uh, on a sunny day isn't too bad if it's piddling down with rain or there's a nice london peace super fog rolled in across three and a half thousand kilometers of atlantic into the caribbean um spotting them little white 
cutlasses can be a bit tricky, and if you've been looking for 25 minutes, can test one's patience a little bit. Um, now, so at the same time as travelling is, is, is a bit pesky, because, you know, like I say, it can take 30, 40 minutes to get to and to, to one mission and then to the next after it. It can take an hour and a half if you're going into maybe into enemy territory to try and take a port and you need to position yourself up. Uh, I do think that for the masses, for lots and lots of game players, that is too much downtime. It's just too slow. But on the other hand, a large number of the repeat player base for this game are the hardcore sim players. And they like the fact that it takes a couple of hours to sail from, you know, one port in Cuba to the other end of uh, Haiti or whatever. And, and all the risk that's involved, uh, especially in the PvP world, of doing such a perilous journey. Um, so it's a real trick for them. In the game at the moment, you can you can teleport once every four hours, and you can only teleport really with your ship to your capital. If you've set up outposts elsewhere, when you teleport, you don't take your ship with you, which means you now have to basically store a ship in every port, um, very much like a proper sailor does with women. Uh, or a female sailor might do with men. She's inclined. So, um, open world travel's a real balancing trick for them at the moment. I personally think it's a little bit too slow, but I do respect the fact that distance needs to feel like distance. I have to be honest, I don't know a magic answer here. I don't know if it would be possible to perhaps exponentially speed up open world travel the further you are from a landmass, or if there were no ships within Kui of you, or, um, or if it's just as simple as giving you more uh, teleports, maybe a teleport every two hours, and allowing you to take your ship with you to your outpost. I don't know, it's a, it's a real difficult call. Um, a couple of things they could do with open world to make life better. It would be really nice if you could see the name of cities without having to sail close to them. And a simple way of doing that, um, until we get cities that are more distinguishing to look at, because at the moment it's all just a bunch of sort of uh, mud huts, not quite mud huts, but they might as well be, uh, is to give players a, a spyglass on the open world. Um, a spy, a spyglass would be ace. It, ace. it would also allow you to, like, check out a nation's flags so I could look through like this in the open world and go, ooh, it's a jolly pirate. I should go and teach that scholarless dog a lesson or some such. So, um, yeah, there's a few things I think they can do in the open world. Um, just to, I guess, make it a little bit less um, unattractive to people who aren't, you know, Euro Truck Simulator fans or some other hardcore sim fan. I, I do understand that the um, community who love their sims um, will be upset by any changes. I mean, it's ridiculous. It doesn't take six weeks for the love of God to sail between ports. These things are 100 kilometers apart. What's wrong with you, Jahil? Um, but the fact of the matter is um, if you want to be commercially successful, you do have to hit a certain number of players. Uh, this game's a long way off doing that right now. It's still in early access. They might create enough compelling content that the travel time isn't an issue. Uh, so to some extent, with all of my I wish we could do this and wish we could do that, I do actually have a bag full of patience that says, you know what, Jay, just hold your horses, mate. Give the developers a bit of time. They're going to put events in. They're going to do more things, blah, 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 blah. So that's all good and true. Uh, but if a game gets a crap reputation in early access, uh, reputation, first impressions are hard to set twice, as my grandma used to say. Um, and a lot of folks will have played this, drawn the opinion that Jesus is slow, man. And uh, it's now difficult for them to, to pick it back up again. And that really takes me to my last point, which is the player base. So when they released Naval Action on Steam, uh, 70,000 people there or thereabouts bought it, so that's fantastic, um, early access, very small development house, 70,000 people, 40 bucks, uh, take out Steam's cut, 
Uh, they'll have raked in a couple of million dollars. That'll pay for ten developers for a year, or five developers for two years, or however you want to chop up that money. Um, and that was probably what they needed to do to keep it going and feed the children um, who, who code it, get them enough pizzas and, and, and cans of energy drink. So, 70,000 folks bought it, but here's the scary monsters thing. In the last two weeks, of those 70,000, just under 20,000 are still playing it. Now, that's not unusual to some extent for a game. Most games have a burst at the start. Uh, but in only three months, to have lost 50,000 out of 70,000 players. I know it's early access, but are you putting enough lollies in there to keep the kiddies coming back? We've gone from, just in the last month, we've gone from 5,000 uh, concurrent players at peak time, so 5,000 people on at the same time in peak time, to slightly below 3,000. In fact, almost exactly half in three months. Now, maybe it'll bottom out soon. Uh, but I know for my guild, and we had a large guild, a couple of hundred folks in the guild, probably a third of them very active. Um, what we started to discover was that on the server we were on, um, at many of the times we were playing, there'd only be one or two hundred people who were um, who were playing, and it was very difficult, as a result, to to, to get good PvP. Uh, we really were relying on it was almost one group of players that we were PvPing with, and all that was fun, but it's not very vibrant. Um, and as such, the clan I'm with, uh, two or three other big clans ended up moving off um, that PvP server and ended up joining the, the, the largest PvP server. Uh, now that's good because, you know, you get within an hour of the system uh, restart, there's a thousand people online. It's far more vibrant, there's no more AFK sailing, you have to watch the horizon with fear in your pants when you see a sail. Um, so right now, uh, this this one server that has a high load is an exciting place to play. Um, but transferring is a bitch. There is no facilitated transfer. All you bring with you is your experience, both crafting and leveling experience. Uh, just by the by. Ah, oh, I thought I'd just leveled. Oh well. Um, yeah, where's the ding when you level? Where's the hurrah? Well done, Captain. You've just leveled. Anyway, that aside. Um, so we've transferred over, we're all very excited, we're having to re-establish ourselves. Um, Great Britain's been getting its pants kicked on this server, so we want to be part of what's uh, establish our rightful place among these ungrateful colonial moany complainy oh the king wants to take my money and my liberty blah 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 well obviously that needs to sort out anyway that's the march edition um i'm not sure is the frequency of scuttlebutt it might be once a month it might be once every couple of months it might be dependent on content releases one of the problems at the moment with the game is that devs don't really give as much of a roadmap. I understand the reticence of not wanting to commit to things, but if you could at least tell us these are the big things we're working on, you know, we're going to really sex up the trading, or we're going to really make the import menus look like they weren't written by an 11-year-old in 1975. Um, or we're working on three new ships or so on and so forth it would be good to know you know in the next six months what are the four or five things that we can expect to see coming in we know they've been working on sucking in the environment to the battle so if i was to engage a ship right now right here um you know this would be my backdrop there'd be islands if i was close to uh, i don't know where i'm going actually i think that's saint anne if i was close to saint anne uh, look, I mean, look, there's St. Anne, right? Here I am, I'm a sailor, I'm a gnarly old chap, I've been at sea for many days, um, I, I command 300 men, I can't tell that St. Anne, I, I don't have an eyeglass, it, it looks the same as the city just up there, come on, give us a clue, boys. Um, so it'd be really good if they gave us a roadmap, uh, they don't have to give us times, uh, they can change their roadmap, but I think, you know, it's carrot and stick. Give us, uh, uh, carrot and stick's a rubbish analogy. No one likes carrots. I'd rather be hit by a stick than eat a sodden carrot. Um, so, yeah, so chocolates and sticks. Uh, give us some chocolates. Excite us about what's coming next. At the moment, and uh, this is a very important part for me, the reason I come back, uh, 
The reason I log on to play again, fundamentally the PvP and the combat is delicious. Uh, but it's my clan. I'm part of a clan. My clan has a plan. I'm a man with a clan. We do things in the clan. We work together on fleets. We, we, we help cap ships for each other. We craft and trade with each other. Uh, we participate in port battles. So it's the player community that's keeping me coming back. Now the problem is, if the player community keeps bleeding, um, then I don't know. Maybe I'll go and play Gothic Armada. Uh, right now I'm loving the game. Don't get me wrong. I'm loving the game, but really, uh, it would be nice to know what's around the corner. Anyway, uh, that's enough for Scuttlebutt. If you enjoyed Scuttlebutt, or you didn't, but you enjoyed my other videos, please subscribe. Um, and um, I'll see you on the oceans, and I'll catch you.